Okay, so for a video I'm working on at the moment about modern monetary theory, I really wanted to use a metaphor of the economy as being like a sandpit. And I was realizing that the typical way that I make the graphics for my videos just wasn't quite going to capture what I was trying to do. And I remembered using Blender in the past to create some 3D models and animations. And I was just thinking to myself, ah, that's going to take so much time. But then I remembered I'd seen somebody talking about using ChatGPT to create Python scripts to control Blender. And I thought, let's give that a go. So in this video, I'm going to try to do three things very quickly. On the one hand, if you're a coder like me, I'm kind of going to show you at a very high level how you too can use ChatGPT to generate Python scripts to control Blender. But I'm also wanting to show the non-coders behind the scenes what it's like, the way in which ChatGPT becomes this productivity tool for people who can code. And throughout the video, I'm also going to use the whole thing as a way to explore the question of whether ChatGPT is actually understanding what I'm asking it to do and understanding how to work with Blender. So let's dive in. So to get set up, I just downloaded the latest version of Blender. And when you install and run that, it starts you off with this kind of default scene. And then if we jump to ChatGPT, I'm using ChatGPT 4.0. And then to keep things quick, I'm just going to paste in the initial prompt and read it out. I'm working with Blender to create 3D models and animations. And I want to make a model of a children's sandpit with four wooden planks around the edges of the sandpit and sand in the middle, and then a big pile of sand right in the very center of the sandpit. Can you create a Python script that will generate this for me? So let's see what it does. And ChatGPT takes a while to generate these scripts, so I'm going to speed this up a bit. And what's nice is that when it finishes, it gives some instructions on how to use the script, but I've already read that, so I'll just show you what to do. So if we scroll up to the top of the code block, we can click on copy the code, then jump back to Blender, go to the scripting workspace, create a new script, and just paste in the Python script from ChatGPT, and click on the Run button, Okay, and there we have our sandpit. Now, it's created wooden planks, but they're not around the edges of the sandpit. They're in a sort of cross shape. So this kind of shows how it's understood some of what I'm asking it to do, but it hasn't really perfectly understood. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask ChatGPT to correct that mistake, but I'm also going to ask it to add a blue bucket over the top. So we jump back to ChatGPT. The wooden planks are in the wrong shape. Can you make them go around the edges of the sand pit in a square shape. Then can you also add a blue bucket hovering above the pile of sand in the middle? Let's see what that does. And again, I'll speed it up. Okay, it's finished generating the update. So again, we just go up to the top of the code block, copy the code, jump back into Blender. This time select the previous script and just replace it with a new one. Click on run and see what the updated script does. Okay, brilliant. So it's fixed the wooden planks and it's given us a blue bucket of sorts hovering above the sand pile. But I'm also going to explore this question about understanding because one way to think about understanding is that if I had asked something different, it would have done something different. It's a kind of counterfactual way of thinking about what it means to behave as if you understand. So if I'd asked for a green watering can, say, it would have done that instead. So let's test that out. Can you replace the bucket with a green watering can with a spout? And maybe as a coder, I've heard about Blender's particle system and I'd like to learn about using it. So I'll also ask it, can you make water droplets come out of the spout and drip down the sand, sand pile using the particle system? and see what gets generated this time. So once again, scroll up to the top of the code block, copy that, jump back to Blender, select the existing script and replace it with a new one and click on run. There we go. So it's changed the bucket for a watering can. And let's jump into the layout view. And we can see more of that. The watering spout is in a bit of a funny place. But let's see what happens if we run the animation. 
Okay, so we've got water, but it's coming out of the sand pile rather than out of the watering bucket. And the point is that as a coder trying to learn a new system, if you've not used the water particle systems before, it's still faster to use ChatGPT than what we used to do in the old days, just a few years ago, of going to a website like Stack Overflow and looking to see if somebody else had done the kind of thing that you're trying to do. So ChatGPT doesn't get to the point yet where it replaces what a coder can do, but it can save programmers huge amounts of time. So I'm gonna jump back to ChatGPT one last time and see if I can fix those three things. So can you twist the spout so that it sticks straight out of the watering can? Can you also move the droplets to come out of the spout and make them a blue water color? Let's see what it does with that. And again, I'll speed it up. And again, if we scroll up and copy the code, jump back to Blender, select what's there, replace it, and click on Run. OK. So yeah, we've got the spout sticking out there. And if we jump into the layout mode and click on the animation, Those particles are way too small, but they are coming out of the spout. So as I'm a coder, I can jump back to the script. Let's have a look at the size. Zoom in a bit. Let's just make them 10 times larger and run that. Jump into the layout mode. Rerun the animation. And there we go. I mean, it's not brilliant, it's not perfect, but it gives a programmer a really good point from which to jump off and fix things to be exactly how they want it to be, which is what I've been able to do with my animation for the video that I'm putting together about modern monetary theory. So I hope this has given you a vague sense of the weird way in which, on the one hand, ChatGPT clearly isn't deeply understanding what I'm asking it to do. And yet, at the same time, it's giving me a productivity boost because it is behaving as if it understands something about what I'm asking. It understands the difference between a blue bucket and a green watering can. It understands when I ask it for a particle system what it should be trying to do. And I think this distinction between tasks that can be achieved to quite a useful level, even if you don't really understand what you're doing, but just behave as if you understand, is going to be a key distinction in the next couple of years as to which areas AI is found to be extremely useful and which areas its progress is more slow. And the increasing sophistication of these AI tools helps us explore some philosophical ideas like what do we think understanding is really about? For example, maybe testing students in exams is really just testing their behavior to see if they behave as if they understand the questions that we're asking them. And if an AI system behaves in more and more situations where the counterfactuals are all correct, that if you had asked it something different, it would have done something different. When is the point that as if understanding is the same as true deep understanding? Or maybe even when all the counterfactuals are correct, we still want to make a distinction between these two. But we're not going to care if our self-driving cars don't actually understand what they're doing, as long as they do drive safely. So this philosophical distinction may not actually matter in many practical real-world situations. But what are your experiences of using ChatGPT in your work? Have you found it useful even though it's not quite understanding what you're asking it? And when do you think the distinction between really deep understanding and just behaving as if you understand is going to really matter? So please do continue the discussion in the comments below and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like this where I explore this extraordinary changing world that we're all living through. Thank you for watching.